Welcome to the Economist in Your Ear podcast. Have you ever dreamed of building a billion dollar company, but maybe felt like you needed a massive team, huge investments, all that grinding? What if I told you that in 2025, that might not be true? What if you, yes, you as a single individual could create a unicorn company? a private firm valued over a billion dollars, all thanks to artificial intelligence. It's a, it's a really intriguing idea, isn't it? This one person unicorn. Definitely gaining traction in Silicon Valley. It paints a, well, a compelling picture of AI's potential. But like with all big ideas, there's a reality check needed, right? We've been looking into some fascinating stuff that shows the promise, but also the, let's say, significant hurdles. Oh, absolutely. It's certainly a very exciting idea, that poll building something huge with almost no overhead. It's powerful. And AI is transformative, no doubt, giving people capabilities that, well, were just dreams a few years back. But as you hinted, getting to that billion dollar valuation, that involves a lot more than just, you know, a small team, even with a super smart AI. We yeah. really need to unpack what AI empowers first and then look closely at where that narrative might be a bit optimistic. Okay, let's do that. Let's unpack the exciting part first. Our sources they highlight some really inspiring examples. Who who stands out? What a fascinating case is Sarah Gwilliam. Now, she's not a software engineer. She even admits she doesn't speak AI. But after her father passed away, she got this idea for a generative AI startup called Solace. It's aimed at helping people with grief care, managing affairs after someone dies. Mm -hmm. She calls it wedding planning for funerals. Gives you a real picture. Wow. And the key thing is how AI is basically her co-founder. Exactly. Yeah. She joined an AI-powered incubator, Autos. <laughs> they liked her idea. Their bots helped her with, well, everything. Mm -hmm. Setting up online, Instagram, product development, sales, marketing, even the back office stuff. All for a royalty, right? Uh, no staff needed. Right. And she describes the feeling as incredibly empowering. And this isn't just her. It's part of a bigger trend, this solopreneur idea. Yeah, that term's popping up everywhere. These one-person founders using AI. It even connects back to uh, economic theory, Ronald Coase back in the 30s. Oh, right, about why big firms exist. Exactly. He argued large firms are more efficient internally. But digital communication, and now AI, mm. It's flipping that. Individuals can just do so much more now. And Henrik Wervelin from Autos, he sees AI as this next big democratization wave, like cloud computing before it. He said he could start businesses with just a credit card swipe then. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying you don't need to code, you don't need Photoshop. AI helps with that. He's hoping it unleashes tons of startups from people like Sarah, people without that tech background, but with real problems to solve. And that idea of AI as a teammate not just a tool. That's really key here. Kareem Lakhani at Harvard Business School really emphasizes this. He did this field experiment uh, at Procter & Gamble with almost 800 professionals. And what did they find? They found that individuals using generative AI could match the performance of two-person teams who weren't using it. Wow, really? Matching a two-person team? Yeah, it's pretty compelling evidence. AI gives this massive boost to individual performance, which means you can effectively compress the team needed for significant output. It's a game changer for early stages. And it's changing how founders even think about growth. Peter Walker from Carta, you know, the equity management folks, he notes this huge shift. Mm -hmm. Founders used to boast about employee numbers. Now, he says, it's a badge of honor to have just a few people. Right. Look how lean we are. Exactly. And the data shows it, too. Carta says the median time to hire the first employee it jumped from under six months in 2022 to over nine months now in 2024. That's a pretty significant jump. Shows a clear trend. Definitely leaning towards leaner. And we're seeing real money follow this trend, too. Look at Base44, an AI native coding startup sold to Wix not long ago for about $80 million. OK, impressive. And the team size? Just eight employees. Eight. Eight people, $80 million. OK, maybe not a unicorn, but that's serious validation. It really is proof that tiny teams can achieve big outcomes now. OK, so AI definitely shrinks the early team, speeds things up, got it. But that leap, the leap to a billion dollar valuation, that's where things get more complex, right? The whole one person unicorn story, it sounds great, but maybe it smooths over some rough edges. Precisely. And here's where that dream hits its first sort of reality check. It's not just about those transaction costs Coase talked about. Sure, AI agents, lower coordination costs, production costs, great. But in billion dollar markets, other things start to really dominate, like distribution, trust, compliance, getting capital. Right, the non-product stuff. Exactly. Think back to Sarah Gwilliam Solace. Imagine a solopreneur trying to clear SOC2 or ISO certifications. Oh, yeah, those big security and quality standards. Tough for anyone. Very tough, especially solo. 
or navigating health and funeral sector rules, enterprise security reviews, state-by-state -state paperwork. If your product touches sensitive stuff like estates, records, grief care, the solo model just gets completely overwhelmed by these other costs. That makes total sense. It's the whole ecosystem around the product, not just the code. Okay, what's hurdle number two? Agent reliability. And maybe more importantly, compounding errors. Look, AI agents are getting better fast, but they're still kind of brittle. They break in weird ways, and they make what we call long horizon mistakes, small errors that just snowball over time. Snowball? How so? Well, Anthropic, the AI lab, they ran this experiment. Project Vin had an AI manage a vending machine business. The agent, it showed initiative, found suppliers, adapted, but what? it made classic mistakes, ignored good opportunities, hallucinated things, gave too many discounts, yeah. and ultimately it didn't make money. Ah, uh, so small errors adding up. Exactly. These aren't just glitches. They compound across workflows. So this idea of set and forget, it's super risky without really strong evaluation and, frankly, human checks. Right. You can't just let it run wild if the stakes are high. What else? What's the next worry? Challenge three, platform dependence. This is a big strategic risk. Most of these one person or tiny team setups, they're built on large language models and cloud platforms run by just a handful of huge companies like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, the big AI labs. Exactly. And prices change. Models get updated or even retired. Outages happen. And if you're tiny, you don't have an infrastructure team to handle that. Precisely. Any one of those things can break your economics or just take you offline. We've seen it with Azure OpenAI incidents, models getting retired. Hey. You're building your cool thing on someone else's land, basically, and they can change the rent or the rules anytime. That is a critical point. It's fragile. And uh, Annabelle Gower at Surrey University, she made a related point, didn't she? That AI lowers entry barriers, which is great, but it also makes it easier to copy ideas. That's the double-edged sword, absolutely. Easier to start, maybe harder to build a lasting advantage if someone can just replicate your wrapper around a common model. Hmm. So harder to sustain that competitive edge. Which leads to challenge four. Are we seeing lots of new businesses or lots of new durable firms and new business applications are way up true, but the number of employer businesses, the ones that actually hire people, that's cooled off a bit from the peaks. So lots of people starting things, but maybe not scaling into big companies as much. The solopreneur surge is definitely real, but the conversion to scaled employers seems slower. It suggests maybe not all these ventures are on track to be unicorns. Many might be great lifestyle businesses, small successes, but not billion-dollar firms. Okay. And there's a final twist, isn't there, about who actually captures the value? Ah, uh, yes. Challenge five. The cloud keeps the cream. It's the ultimate paradox. AI might democratize creating stuff, but the value capture, it still seems to tilt heavily towards the giants providing the models and the computing power. So AWS, Azure, Google, the AI labs, uh, their revenues are soaring. Right. Startups pay tolls to use their infrastructure and models. It's like, you know, finding gold on rent, land, the landlord takes a big cut. And there's even the risk they could just copy the best ideas. It's what some call the galling possibility. With their resources and platform control, they could potentially observe and then pinch the most promising applications built on their tech. Okay, so putting this all together, what's the realistic path forward for you, our listener, maybe thinking about building something with AI? Is the one person unicorn just like a myth? Or is there a chance? Look, one human forever seems highly unlikely for a unicorn. The more plausible path, it's probably one to few. Hmm. Picture this. A founder uses AI agents, maybe some contractors, to get to product market fit. Prove the idea. Get some traction. Okay. The lean start. Then, as the contracts get bigger, liabilities grow. You strategically add a very lean core team, maybe something for compliance, maybe enterprise sales. So not one, but maybe three, four, five key people, something like that. Now, are there exceptions? Maybe. Ultra high margin, self-serve software, strong network effects, low regulation. But didn't we just say those are easier to copy now because of AI? That's the paradox. AI accelerates your ability to build it, but also your competitor's ability to copy it. Maintaining that edge gets really tough. Right. So if you are trying this lean, maybe one to few approach, how do you stack the odds in your favor? What are the key strategies? Okay, yeah, let's get practical. There are definitely things you can do. Concrete strategies. First, design for distribution modes. Don't just build a cool AI feature. Think early and hard about owning a channel. Like what kind of channel? Maybe build a strong community around your product. Get a unique slot in a marketplace. 
build a data flywheel where using your product makes it better in a way competitors can't easily copy, your distribution needs to be defensible. Got it. Moats aren't just the tech. What's next? Second, engineer for platform resilience. Don't just assume the big platforms will always work perfectly or stay cheap. Build in fallbacks. Maybe use multiple AI models, so if one has issues, you switch. Have offline paths for critical stuff. Set cost caps. And test this stuff, right? Don't wait for an outage. Absolutely. Test your outage plan. Guess what happens if a model you rely on gets deprecated? Be prepared. Okay, resilience. Third. Third, operationalize agent QA. Quality assurance for your AI. Don't just launch your agents and hope for the best. Ship them with evaluation tools, systems that constantly check their work, look for regressions, monitor accuracy, like QC for your bots. And keep a human in the loop for important things. Definitely. Anything involving significant money, customer taste, legal stuff, you need human oversight. AI is an assistant, not the CEO yet. Makes sense. And finally. Finally, pick low compliance beachheads. Start somewhere simple, regulation-wise. Don't jump straight into areas needing heavy audits or handling sensitive data like PHI or PII, protected health information, personally identifiable information. Stuff like medical records or social security numbers. Exactly. That comes with huge regulatory burdens. Wait until you have the resources, maybe that small core team, before tackling those complex high compliance domains. The paperwork alone can sink a solo founder. Okay, that's super practical advice. So let's try and wrap this up. The core understanding seems to be AI, phenomenal tool, genuinely lets individuals or tiny teams do things that were impossible before. It can compress that founding stage. Absolutely. It democratizes entrepreneurship in a powerful way. But hitting that unicorn valuation, that's not just about having fewer people. No, indeed. It really comes back to fundamental business strategy, building strong moats, truly understanding your market, developing absolutely ruthless reliability in your tech and operations, and very carefully managing how dependent you are on those tech giants. Billion-dollar success still hinges on those things, not just headcount. Right. So maybe the first one-person unicorn, if we ever see one, won't be some lone genius with perfect bots. Maybe it's a brilliant founder who uses AI to be incredibly capital efficient, build something solid, and then smartly expands into a lean, resilient, one-to-few company that just dominates its niche through clever distribution and that engineered resilience we talked about. What does that shift, the potential future, mean for career paths for you? Something to think about.